Praise the Lord, everybody. How are you guys doing? Good evening, good evening, good evening. Amen. Amen. I got home last night and my wife said, by the way, I just want to let you know that whenever you started off, you said good morning about eight times. So I wanted to make sure that I said good evening tonight. Amen. Amen. I walked all the way up here. Good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening. All right. I think I got it right this time. I'm forgiven. Thank you, Miss Charlotte. Thank you, Miss Charlotte. Well, welcome to pre-service prayer. Thank everybody here and who's joining on online for coming. It is exciting. Um, and welcome to night two of Miracles on the Mountain. Amen. Yeah. You know, real quickly, I just, I just want to give the Lord praise for what happened last night. Last night was absolutely phenomenal, and it was just the beginning. We're only going to build from there. Amen. We're going to go from faith to faith. We're going to go from glory to glory, and the Lord is going to show up and show out again tonight. In fact, he's here right now because the Bible says where two or more are gathered together in agreement, there I am. So Jesus, we welcome you. Jesus, we welcome you. We thank you. We praise you and we honor you and we bless you and we love you and we thank you so much for everything that you're doing today, everything that you've done so far, everything that you plan on doing tonight. Lord, we just say have your way in this place. We say have your way in this facility. We say have your way and let healing, signs, wonders, miracles, demonstrations, manifestations take place tonight. And Father, I'm reminded of Exodus 34, 10, where you said that you made a covenant with Moses that you will do marvelous acts and demonstrations. So Father, I thank you that we can lay hold of that because you do not break your covenant and you're still doing marvelous acts and wonders and miracles today. And we thank you for that, Jesus. And we love you and we praise you in the name of Jesus. Well, I want to really, uh, last night, just kind of uh, to recap, we really looked at the life of Jesus. Um, we looked at his life and ministry. We, a we asked three questions and answered them. Is it the will of God to be healed? Is it the will of God that he heals everyone? Yes. Is it the will of God that he heals everything? Yes. Did we prove that last night? Did we see it demonstrated last night as well? It didn't matter what it was. If there was metal in your arm, metal in your leg, metal in your back, the metal dissolved. If it was a hernia, it got rid of. COPD was gone, lupus, all these different things and things that we haven't heard about yet. All of them were taking place in healing because God is a God who heals and it is his will to heal everybody of everything. That's his will. And he, he gave us the ability to believe him for things like that. Amen. And then we looked through different occurrences and different, um, different accounts throughout scripture where, and we really focused in on, um, and spent probably the, the most time at any one scripture at Hebrews chapter seven, verse 25, that says, and he will save you to the uttermost. That word saved means healed. It means delivered. It means preserve. It means protect. It means make whole. And the word uttermost means completely and perfectly. So he heals you completely and perfectly perfectly. He saves you completely and perfectly. He protects you completely and perfectly. There's nothing that he doesn't heal you from and there's nothing that he won't deliver you of because he saves you to the uttermost. And then we looked at that in the Passion Translation where the Bible then says, and I love the word, the King James says seeing that, but I like the word because, because it's more common to our modern day vernacular. And it says, because he ever lives to make intercession for us. So he's able to save us to the uttermost because he ever lives to make intercession for us. And we drew the conclusion through looking at multiple scriptures that prayer is the bridge that gets the will of God to mankind. Amen? Amen. In every situation, he saved, the Bible says that salvation has appeared to all men, but you've got to pray a prayer and confess Jesus is Lord before it manifests in your life. It's his will, but we've got to do something about it and believe him and make a confession and pray. Amen? Amen. Did, we, did we see that? And then we looked at a couple of occurrences in um, Luke chapter 5 and Luke chapter 6 where we saw that Jesus prayed, and as a result of that prayer, the healing power was present. Amen? Amen? The healing power was there was a result of Jesus' prayer time. It was a result of Jesus' prayer time. Now, it's his will for that healing power to be present all the time, every day, everywhere. But if we don't keep that bridge open, if we don't keep that channel open, then we cut off the healing power from manifesting in our life. Amen? 
And uh, we read this prophecy, and tonight we're going to look at the same thing, the same concept, but we're going to look at it throughout the book of Acts and uh, see how this same idea manifested in the life of the disciples. But I want to start here um, because this, I just, there's a, so much grace and so much power from this word that the, that the Lord delivered through Brother Copeland on December 31st. And it says this, what about this 2019? How can the marvels and the wondrous works take place? What brings these wonderful works and miracles? What causes these things to be manifest? First of all, there must be a higher order of prayer coming forth out of the family. Intercession, petition, and supplication for the lost. Much prayer and much calling forth. Much calling things that be not as though they were. Praying for the lost, reaching into the heart of God, and asking Him for the nation. 2019 must be a year of great intercession and witnessing outside the walls of the church. Now I'm going to stop there tonight because this really contains everything that I want to focus on. But he starts it off, we said this last night, he starts us off with proposing three questions. And these questions are, um, how can the marvels and wonderful works take place? What brings the wonderful works and miracles? And what causes these things to be manifest? He asks those three questions and then like the Lord usually does, he answers his own question. And then he says, first of all, he doesn't say second of all, he doesn't say third of all, or if you have time or whenever it pops up in your schedule, he says, first of all, in other words, you have got to place a priority on this. You've got to place a demand on this. And we have to purpose in our own hearts that we have got to put this first and foremost. He said, first of all, if you want to see these things come to pass, there must be a higher order of prayer. There must be. So if we're going to see these things take place, then we then, the Lord gives us a, a, a key as to how we're going to see them come to pass. And he says, pray. Pray, open up the bridge, keep those channels open to see my hand move in your life. And he goes on to say, a higher order of prayer coming forth out of the family. I've never seen a one-man family. Have y'all? Have y'all seen a one-man family? No. The, by, he doesn't say, well, I, need, I need all this prayer to fall on the weight of this one person. No, he says, there must be a higher order of prayer coming forth out of the entire family family. Every single one of us come in together, me and Miss Charlotte, Mr. Brian, every, all, Miss Rita, everybody here coming together and answering the call to this higher order of prayer to see these things come to pass, to see these healings come to pass, to see these miracles come to pass, to see these demonstrations come to pass. And the Lord has now put in our hands, are you going to answer the call? Are you going to step up and answer and go into this higher order of prayer? I don't necessarily know exactly what that, the fullness of that entails, but I know I can take a first step and he'll lead me the rest of the way. Yes. And now family gives us a big important key word. And while I talk about this point, go ahead and open up to Philippians chapter 1 verse 19. We mentioned this last night, but I want to put our eyes on it tonight. And Philippians, uh, he, he brings out the word family, so that entails to me that this is more than one person. So that goes ahead and sets the foundation right there that he's talking about this corporate atmosphere, this corporate prayer gathering. Now, why is the corporate prayer gathering so important? You look at um, Philippians chapter 1. This is, uh, this is, I'm going to read you my favorite prayer verse and my favorite faith verse. Um, and my favorite faith verse doesn't even have the word faith in it, but it's powerful and it's packed with faith. Chapter 1 verse 19 says this, For I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayers and through your supply of the Spirit. So that tells me that whenever we, he's writing to an entire church here, he's writing to the church of Philippi, and he says that I am in prison, but I know that this is going to turn to my salvation through your prayers and through your supply of the Spirit. That tells me that every single person in the corporate prayer setting has a supply to bring and has a gift inside of them that is valuable and that this corporate place needs because I carry an anointing that Mr. Brian doesn't carry. And he carries an anointing that I don't carry. But whenever our anointings come together, we can see something that we couldn't see by ourselves. Amen. For instance, the Bible says one man can, one can put a thousand of flight, two can put ten thousand of flight, and a three-fold cord is not easily broken. So what happens whenever everybody in this room comes together 
fully engaged in one accord, bringing their supply and saying, I'm going to bring what I bring to the table and I'm not going to give up and I'm not going to quit and I'm going to see this thing manifest and I'm going to see these signs, I'm going to see these wonders and I'm going to see these miracles. And I think it's interesting that Paul says that this will turn to my salvation because of your prayers and because of your supply. That tells me that my supply can bring deliverance to somebody else. We'll look at that and see that unravel as we go throughout the book of Acts. But go with me now to uh, Philemon's chapter 1. There's only one chapter in Philemon. So go with me to the book of Philemon. And I, I am not exaggerating whenever I say that this is my favorite faith verse in the entire Bible. Mark 11, 23 is a very close second. Philemon chapter 22 says, but with all, prepare me also a lodging. He's saying, prepare me a lodging, for I trust that through your prayers I shall be given unto you. Do y'all hear the faith in that verse? He's in prison, guys, and he's saying, go ahead and prepare me a lodging, because I trust that through your prayers I'll be delivered unto me. I'm not going to be stuck in this jail cell. I'm going to come straight to you, so go ahead and make me a room. Is that not faith? Is that not faith coming? And it's faith, and this is the result of Philemon's prayers. He trusts that through his prayers. So my question is, what preparations have we made? Have we prepared our minds? Have we prepared our hearts? What preparations have we made? Because I'm expecting great things. I'm trusting that through our prayers, through this corporate atmosphere, we're going to see mighty marvelous things tonight. Amen. 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 We'll turn with me to Acts chapter 1 and we'll go through these passages relatively quickly. As, and then we'll pray. And we're going we're gonna to do some kingdom business tonight. Amen. Are you all ready to go to the throne room? Praise God. Why, are, why am I teaching right now? I said the verse last night. Did he who worked, uh, uh, ministered the Spirit unto you and worked, minister, or worked miracles among you, did he do it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? So we're being, we're being fed faith right now. Then we're going to release our faith and we're going to receive. Amen? Amen. So go with me to Acts chapter 1 verse 14. And the Bible says this. These all continued with one accord and supplication. I wanted to start here because this lays the precedent for corporate prayer in the book of Acts. It says that this, Jesus has ascended and their first response to the ascension to Jesus was to come together, about 120 of them, in the upper room and to give themselves, the, 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 the New Living Translation says that they constantly united in prayer. This was a continual act. They all the time got up and they came together and prayed. This wasn't something that they, they, that they just did once or twice. They did this day after day after day. They constantly gathered together in one accord. That tells me that we have got to be in full agreement whenever we come into this corporate place. I'm not going to be over here praying for China while somebody else is praying for Germany. But we're going to come together with one mind, with one focus and one accord and, and together we're all going to go up and we're going to sin, ascend and we're going to operate at the highest level of efficiency whenever it comes to our prayer lives because there's going to be no division among us because we're going to make sure that we're in one accord. A friend of mine says that the corporate atmosphere works best where there's corporate understanding. In other words, we all got to be on the same page with all this and they lay it out right here that they continued with one accord in prayer and supplication. Then you go to Acts chapter 2, and the Bible says this, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Now, he just laid out what one accord means. One accord is indicative of a prayer time. They're sitting there together. This is 50 days later, and all of a sudden the day of Pentecost is fully come, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. But what I want to say, this wasn't just a random act that they woke up one day. This was the culmination of 50 days of continual corporate prayer. This was this outpouring of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues and the signs and wonders of the fire so much that everybody else saw it and they thought that they were drunk and Peter says these men aren't drunk as you suppose but they're filled with the Holy Ghost. This was the culmination of 50 days of corporate prayer. 
There's power in this corporate prayer place. And then you go on and read, and just because they've received the Holy Spirit, they didn't stop this corporate prayer atmosphere. They kept on doing it. They kept on doing it, and they wouldn't stop. And you go on to verse 40, uh, 40, 42 in the same chapter, Acts chapter 2, verse 42, and it says, And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. It says that they continued, they, multiple, not just one, but they, in this corporate prayer place, they continued with one accord and they continued to pray steadfastly. This word steadfastly in the Greek means a couple things. It means to persevere. So we see persevering prayer. This isn't just a five minute time of prayer and then we're done. No, this is an ongoing time of prayer that I'm not going to stop praying until I see the results that I'm praying about. And then he goes on and says that the, the original Greek also means it, uh, uh, con be constantly diligent. And I, this is my favorite one, to give oneself to continually. Yes. To give oneself to continually. So they, gave, they, they made the conscious decision and they made the quality decision to give themselves to completely and entirely to this place of prayer. Now, look at verse 43. Remember, this is miracles on the mountain. Miracles on the mountain. And it says in verse 43, it says, And fear came upon them, fear came upon every soul, and many miraculous wonders and signs were done by the apostles. But don't get the cart before the horse, the corporate prayer, the prayer came before the miraculous signs and wonders. Oftentimes we seek the Lord and we want to see all these signs and wonders and the Lord's like, pray. I want to see signs. Pray. I want to see signs. Pray. Show me miracles, God. Okay, pray. He's given us the answer and we try to overlook the prayer part, but the Lord's putting an emphasis all throughout the book of Acts that if you want to see signs, if you want to see miracles, if you want to see healings, give yourself to this place of prayer and then that bridge and that channel will be open and you'll see my will manifest in your life. Amen? Amen? Do we see it right here? It says that, he, that they gave themselves to prayer, and as a result of them giving themselves to prayer, the, the, the many wonders and signs, the New Living Translation says miraculous signs were done by the apostles. We're building ourselves up right now. We're, 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 we're going and we're, we're stretching ourselves. We're expanding our faith because we're going to pray and we're going to believe that we're going to see the things that we see right here. Amen? Go with me to Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4. Excuse me, Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3. And verse uh, 1. It says, Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer. Now this Greek word prayer is really, really interesting. It, it, it denotes a set apart place and time of prayer. In other words, this wasn't just something that they decided to do once or twice. This was something that was continual. They went to the temple at the time of prayer. So this corporate prayer atmosphere, this is everybody coming together. And so this is, this whole account takes place in this set apart time of prayer. And you go on and you keep on reading in verse 2. It says, And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that, create, that entered into the temple, who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him and John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I give thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. This man's never walked a day in his life. He has been lame since his, from his mother's womb. He's never walked. And then verse 8 says, And he leaped up and stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. So this man, who's never walked a day in his life, gets just close to this prayer atmosphere, this corporate prayer setting, and, it, and, and, and he couldn't even resist it, and his healing took place. And the Lord pointed something out to me tonight, which comes into everybody's supply being valuable in the corporate prayer place, and that's the fact that the Lord just kind of talked to me about this. I just couldn't get drawn away from Acts chapter 3. And he said the man wasn't even believing for his healing. You see what he was expecting in verse 3 and verse 5. It says, who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple asked of alms. He wasn't expecting healing. He asked of alms. 
And then verse 5 says, He gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. So other translations deliberately say that he was expecting to receive money of them. But this man didn't get money. He got, he got, he got healed because whenever we all get together and you bring your supply and I bring my supply, then whenever my faith is weak, your faith can come in and help me because now we're not in this alone, but we're in this together and we can bear one another's burdens because I can bring my supply to help you and you can bring your supply to help me. Amen. Amen. Everybody has a part to play in this place. And whenever we do this and whenever we make sure that we're being purposeful to I'm not going to let go. I'm going to lay hold of this rain and I'm not going to let go. I'm going to bring my supply and I expect to see signs, wonders, miracles and healings take place. Then that's what's going to happen. That's what's going to happen. And you see this time and time again throughout the book of Acts. We're only three chapters in and we've seen it three times already. And then Acts chapter 4, let's look at that. Acts chapter 4, we're going to keep on going. We're going to nail this hammer. We're going to hammer this nail in until we get the point across. Amen? Are y'all seeing it? Do y'all see the connection between miracles and, and, and prayer and corporate prayer specifically? Acts chapter 4 verse 23 says this, and let go, this is right after Peter and John got arrested for what that, that account just then, they were put in jail, they were released, and uh, they, uh, verse 23 in chapter 4 comes and it says, and being let go, they went to their own company and reported all that the chief priests, elders had said unto them, and when they heard it, they lifted up their voices with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God, which has made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them. You see see that this, here they are again coming together in one accord. They're in complete agreement. They're not going off and doing their own thing, but there's in this corporate prayer place, everybody's bringing their supply. They're bringing their gifts. They're bringing their anointings and they come together and pray. They're all praying the same thing. They all have the same mind. They all have the same focus. They all have the same intent. They all desire the same outcome. And then you see it in verse 29, it says, and now Lord, behold their threatenings and with gr and, and grant unto thy servant that with servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word by stretching forth thy hand to heal and that miraculous signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken and where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they spake, the, they spoke the word of God with boldness. But this ground shaking experience, this Holy Spirit infilling and this ability to speak the word of God with boldness was it wasn't just some random act of God that he decided to do. It was expected, it was calculated, and it was a result of corporate prayer. Amen? Amen. There's power in this place. There's power. And whenever we tap into this, we'll see things that we haven't seen before because we're all coming together and bless the Lord. If somebody lets go, somebody picks up the slack. And everybody's being valued and everybody brings value and everybody's doing what they're supposed to do, what they're called to do. And that's the place that power flows through. And that's the place that signs flow through. That's the place that healings flow through. And it sets the atmosphere and it absolutely charges the atmosphere with faith. So much so that God can't help but move because this place is absolutely permeated with expectation and faith. We said it yesterday, uh, Pastor Terry said this a number of years back, I believe. Um, she said, there's something about it. There's just something about it when people who know how to use their faith come together and pray. There's just something about it. But what about signs, wonders, and miracles? They prayed in verse 30 about miraculous signs and wonders. If you look at verse chapter 5, verse 12, it says, And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. Do we see a pattern here? Do we see a pattern here? Yes. Amen. And it says, and they were all in one accord in Solomon's porch, and the, and the rest, don't, no, no man dared join them, um, join himself to them, because the people magnified them, and believers were all the more added to the Lord, multitudes, multitudes both, men, both of men and women, insomuch that they brought forth the sick into the street, and laid them on beds and couches, that at least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow them. There came also multitudes out of the city round about into Jerusalem, bringing sick folks, and 
them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed, every one of them. Out of this corporate prayer place, out of everybody coming together and praying, there was so much power. There was such, as, as we read yesterday in Luke chapter 6, there was such a tangible, supernatural power emanating through Jesus. You see the same thing, that they just wanted to get these people in the shadow of Peter because they knew if they could just get them there, this power to heal, this power to save, this power to deliver, this power to set free, and this power to bring about miracles was so strong here that you don't even have to touch them. I just want your shadow to cross his path. And this was a result of corporate prayer. Amen? And then go with me then to Acts chapter 12. We're almost done and then we'll pray. This is stirring me up to pray. This is setting us up to do something. This is setting us up to do damage. I'm not just sitting here talking, trying to talk. I'm setting us up so we can accomplish and pray at the highest level of efficiency that the Lord wants us to pray at today. Amen. And we're going to see some marvelous things. It says in verse 12, um, in chapter 12, verse 4, it says, And when he had apprehended him, him being Peter, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaterians of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Not just one person, not just John, not just James. James just got, was, just, was just martyred. Not just Paul, not just anybody, but the entire church prayer was made without ceasing for Peter. Prayer was made without ceasing for Peter. And then you go read in verse 6, it says, And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and light shined in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself and bind on thy sandals and go. And so he did. And he said unto to him, cast thy garments upon thee and follow me. And he went out and followed him and uh, was not that it was true which was done by an angel, but thought, but he thought it was a vision. And when they were past the first and the second ward, they came into the iron gate that leads unto the city, which opened to them of his own accord. And they went out and passed on through one, one street, and forthwith the angel departed from him. So here's the church coming together and pray for one man. You know that it's the church supply because Peter's asleep when all this is going on. And all of a sudden, this angel taps him on the shoulder, and it was the corporate supply that sent the angel. It was the corporate supply of prayer that broke the chains off of him. It was the corporate supply of prayer that brought, that brought them through the first guards, through the second guards. It was the corporate supply that burst it open, an iron gate, an iron gate, an iron gate, an iron gate, guys. This is a strong gate. This isn't something that you can just kick over like a picket fence. This is an iron gate, and this corporate supply carried so much power, and had so so much momentum that there's absolutely no bondage, there was no change, there was no guards, there was no gates that could keep Peter in that prison. When people came together and prayed and decided, I'm not going to stop until I see Peter released. Likewise, when we come together, there's nothing that can say, keep anybody bound whenever we come together in one accord and say, I'm not going to stop and I'm going to hold my faith out there till I see my desired result come upon my brothers and sisters. Amen. My desired result, not the enemy. I'm not going to let him do anything. I'm going to kick down that iron gate. I'm going to shake off these chains and I'm going to keep on walking. And you find out in verse 12 that this corporate supply brought Peter all the the way back to the origin, which was the house of, house of Mary where he found people praying. He found a group of people praying. Amen. 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 We're not even halfway through the book of Acts, guys. And then you look, we're not going through the whole book of Acts. Don't worry about that. We're about to pray. This is the last one and then I want to pray. This is one of my favorites, if not my favorite. Acts chapter 16, verse 25. It says, and at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed. Do we see a pattern? 
Paul and Silas prayed, if two or more are gathered together in my name, and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them, and suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundation of the prisons were shaken, and immediately all the doors were open, and everyone's bands were loosed. Now, there's a lot that we could point out there, but I want to point out one thing very simple. Paul and Silas were the only ones praying, but everybody's door was open, and everybody's chains fell off. Everybody's. So I'll say it again. Your supply can set somebody else free. Yes. Amen. Your supply can set the person next to you free. Your supply. There's people that will be in here later on that aren't in here right now. And this corporate prayer that's, that's going to be electrified with faith, electrified with expectation, is going to be so potent that the supply that we bring to the table can help set the people that aren't in here free. Amen. Amen. Are y'all stirred up? Do y'all see this pattern of prayer and signs and wonders and miracles and healings and all these things? This ground shaking, this, uh, this lame man walking, this Holy Spirit infilling, this iron gate opening, this bondage dropping. All these things are a result of corporate prayer. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, let's do, let's, 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 as an act of unity to be in one accord, let's lift up our hands and just begin thanking the Lord. And as, as, as I pray, pray in the Spirit with me. Oh, we thank you, Lord Jesus. You don't have to keep your hands up the whole time, but let's start here as, a, as an act of one accord. Oh, Lord Jesus, we thank you. Father, we praise you and we give you glory and honor and we thank you for showing up here tonight. We thank you for manifesting yourself here tonight with great power and great might and great strength. And, and, and you are here ready and we thank you right now that you are invading this place. Father, we thank you that you have invaded this place with prayer. You have invaded this place with, 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 with miracles. You have invaded this place with signs. You have invaded this place with, with demonstrations ready to be met. You have dispatched angels right now. You have dispatched angels right now to bring about words of knowledge right in the name of Jesus and Father we thank you for the full flow of the gifts of the Spirit. We thank you for, for words of knowledge taking place tonight. We thank you for clear utterance taking place. Utterance, words of knowledge that bring about healing. Words of knowledge that aren't just given just to have a word of knowledge spoken but words of knowledge that are backed with the healing power of God. Words of knowledge that are backed with the miracle working power of God. Words of knowledge that are backed with demonstrations. Words of knowledge that are backed with signs, words of knowledge that are backed with impact, words of knowledge that are backed with demonstrations, words of knowledge, utterance right now to bring about the works, utterance right now to bring about the works, utterance to bring about the greater works, Lord, that you said. And by the same principle that you laid out, Lord Jesus, that, that, that he, he whom God sent spoke the words of God, and then Acts chapter 14, the the words that I speak, they're not my own, but the Father that dwells within, He does the works. He gives the words and He does the works. Father, we thank You for utterance. Utterance in the Holy Ghost. Utterance of miracles. Utterance of miracles. Utterance of healings. Utterance of signs. Utterance of demonstrations. Utterance of manifestations. Utterance of glory. Utterance that brings the King of Kings. Utterance that magnifies Him. Utterance that reveals Jesus. Utterance that reveals the glory. Utterance that reveals Feels the anointing. Ah, yes, utterance that is packed with the anointing. Utterance that is packed with the anointing. Utterance that is packed with the burden removing, yoke destroying power of God. Utterance that is packed with, with that, that is absolutely saturated, that is consumed, and that are vehicles of faith, not just words, the right words at the right time, but Father, utterance that releases Jesus into the situation. Utterance that releases healing into the situation. Utterance that releases miracles into the situation. Utterance that releases manifestations into the situations. Utterance that releases revelation into the situation. Oh yes, utterance that restores. Utterance that restores. Yes, restoration taking place. Restoration taking place. Restoration in the minds. Restoration in the minds. Restoration in the minds taking place. Yes, Lord. Restoration in the minds. Restoration in the hearts. Restoration in the hearts. Hearts being healed. Hearts being healed. Restoration in the bodies. Restoration in the families. Restoration in our personal lives, Lord Jesus. Restoration. Oh, rebe de mosomaka le shomraka zelo mosa. 
sabraba bakono shakala gono sambraka o sharabahaka everevo sombraba mano sebraka jela la mo sombrebere baso baka deviticata o shana ma sebere bokoto jala mahaka sebro bobo samabakata Yo no manke le vede som rebe som braba bange sto braba kaste bediato jebla ma som braba haste vlevere ko no shakala bahaka zoma kele bondo ste brebe sto braba bamba no se braha le vede ko no jana mango sa bra le ve som baka ste blere ko to orama ste berias yes lord oh shana mahaka ste blebere kanda charge us oh yes stir us up lord oh stir up the expectation Stir up the expectation. Stir up the gift of faith. Stir up the gift of faith. Stir up the faith that is with every single one of us. Stir up the seeds. Stir up the seeds. The seeds to see miracles. The seeds to see. The seeds to see. Stir up the seeds to see right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, rubble kono sabraka. Jela mansum brebe casta braka le beso maka le vahata. Yo no mashe bleke som brebe di bankanda. Oh, yana maste blebe de casto brebe. Shala Vahaka, Jono Sangle Vekila Mahaste Berebo Sombrabaste Bedicata. Yes, Lord. Oh yes, Shamaston Brebe Shabahaste Beti Bakondo Ste Brebe di Bakanta. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you for healing. We thank you for sending forth. We thank you for the greater works taking place tonight. Yes, Lord, the greater works. We thank you for the greater works unraveling. We thank you for the unraveling of healing. Healings that have been taken, that that, that yes, Lord, sicknesses that have been there for a long time are being healed tonight. We thank you for the tangible. We thank you for the supernatural. We thank you for the powerful we thank you for the miraculous we thank you for the tangible supernatural power emanating this atmosphere permeating this place and filling it till it overflows with electrifying faith with electrifying faith and absolutely engulfing this atmosphere with an expectation that is so great that there is absolutely nothing that won't manifest there's nothing that that, that we 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 increase and we we stir ourselves up to where we reach this place of of expectation where we reach this place of expectancy where we reach this place of faith where we're not going to be content without without walking out with the exact thing and with everything that we came in here believing for healings taking place miracles taking place oh open up the heavens and pour it out lord pour out the healings pour out the miracles pour out the blessings pour out the blessings pour it out god pour it out on this place oh yes lord rava ste brebe do koma ste brebe ti kolomo shakrava savatata oh we're going higher we're going higher take us to a higher level take us to a greater level of glory tonight lord take us to a higher level of glory a greater level of glory that we haven't seen but father your word says that if you would unveil faces behold my face then you will then I will take you from glory to glory Lord take us to a higher place tonight Oh, a higher place of expectation, a higher place of permeation, a higher place of tangibleness, a tangible presence, a tangible presence to where Jesus, Lord, you're here, and we thank you for being here, and Father, you're stretching forth your hand. You're stretching forth your hand right now, just as Peter prayed in Acts chapter 4. You're stretching forth your hand to heal. You're stretching forth your hand to save. You're stretching forth your hand to deliver. You're stretching your hand, hand stretching forth your hand to perform miraculous signs you're stretching forth your hand to perform wonders you're stretching forth your hand to gather everyone together in one place and with one accord to for no other reason but to see you glorified to see you magnified so Lord let everything draw its attention to you let every healing point towards you let every miracle point towards you let every let every miraculous sign point towards you let every demonstration point towards you let every wonder point towards you and Lord Lord Jesus, we just thank you that as you are lifted up tonight, you will draw all men unto yourself. And whenever you draw all men unto yourself, you draw them into that place of healing. Oh, you draw them into that place of deliverance. You draw them in that place where miracles flow freely. 
Zobra baba soma shebe stom rakle vaste breti kama. Jela ba som rebe stoma kaste bleve tu kuma ste braka. Zoma se braka le vere stom braka ste bleve de romo so braha. Ye soma se brake le vo som baka le verikanda. Jana ma se braka la vahata. Jono moko baka la vakata. Zebra baba baba no se brebe de stoma osta braka. Jebla baba baba kondo se brebe de vasto boko maste beri vakata. Keep praying in the spirit, but what are we doing right now? As we pray in the spirit, the Bible says in Jude verse 20 that we're building ourselves up on our most holy faith. We're building ourselves up. We're edifying ourselves. We're edifying our expectation. We're edifying our capacity to believe. We're edifying our capacity to expect. We're enlarging our capacity to see God. We're enlarging our capacity to see these things take place. And Lord Jesus, we thank you so much that you are sending forth answers right now. Oh, Sharababa, Stomo, come breve, Tista Mahala, Bedesto Braca, Zebra Baba, no se breve, Resto Boko, Master, breve, de Basta Braca, Stebedi Bokotu, Yes, some brash, the breve, de Co, Master, Braca, Lavando, Ste breve, Jono Sacrabas, the breve, de Basso, Mosta Braha, Yes, some breve, de Stomo, Ste breve, de Bacanda, Yes, Lord Jesus, and I thank you for utterance of fire, utterance of fire that burns out sickness, utterance of fire that burns out disease. Utterance of fire that brings out miracles. Utterance of fire that brings about miracles. Utterance of fire that purges our bodies. Utterance of fire that purges our minds. Utterance of fire that purges our hearts. Utterance of fire that purges our relationships. Utterance of fire that purges our, our, our inward man. Utterance of fire that purges out sickness. Utterance of fire that purges out disease. Utterance of fire that purges everything. And Father, let the fire of God come down and burn up in Anything that's not supposed to be there for Lord you delight and dwelling in a healed body let the weather the gift of miracle flowing the gift of the supernatural flowing the gift of the present flowing the gift of everything flowing and father burn it up right now oh burn it up and wash away the chaff burn it up and wash away the chaff burn it up with the fire of God and wash it away with the winds of the spirit burn it up with the fire of God and wash it away with the word of the spirit burn it up with the fire of God and wash it away with the word of the spirit burn it up and wash it away 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 but father invade this place with healing invade this place with expectation invade this place with power invade this place with potent invade this place with the supernatural invade this place with your presence invade this place with your glory invade this place with your power invade this place with your name invade this place with your blood invade this place with your potent your tangible your supernatural your healing your miraculous your works your manifestations your demonstrations your signs your wonders oh purge it all and manifest it all oh my god let the glory fall Oh, let the glory fall. Oh, Shabraba dosto makala vahata. Jela vokorra bangle vata. Jebra makata. Jana masondo. Bakale vedi vondo sabrata. Jana masom rebeki masto bokondo. Oh, God, open it up. Pour it out, God. Pour it out, God. All the signs. All the miracles. All the healings. All the fire. Oh, everything, God. Oh, your glory. My God, your glory. Manifest it, God. Sombrebe sabraba casa vasti vidiata. Zo nama ke lebo sabraba so romo kumbraka. Levo sombraka yes tombromo savata takata. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Oh, and all the glory. Oh, and all the glory. Oh, and all the glory. All the glory, all the glory, all the glory, all the glory, all the glory goes to you. All the glory goes to you. Every glory of every.
every testimony goes to you. Every healing goes to you. Every manifestation goes to you. Every demonstration goes to you. Every miracle goes to you. Every sign goes to you. Oh, because it's you that brought it to pass, and it's you that gets the glory. It's you that brought it to pass, and it's you that gets us the glory. Oh, in Jesus, we fix our eyes. Oh, my shit, brababas to bokovata. Oh, Sharebe di Bakando, we thank you, God. Oh, we thank you, God. Oh, we thank you, God. Oh, Sharabas de Vitikata. Just praise them in tongues. Just praise them in the spirit. The Bible says he who prays in tongues gives perfect praise. Oh, Sharabas de Vitikata. Oh, Sharebe de Bo. Yes, Lord Jesus. Feel it. Oh Jesus, 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 Jesus. Shaklava so brebishta bahata. Oh, we thank you for it, God. We thank you for it. We thank you for the fire. We thank you for the signs. We thank you for utterance. We thank you for utterance. We thank you for utterance that the Holy Spirit backs with his power. We thank you for utterance that brings about manifestations. And we just thank you and we praise you and we give you and you alone all the glory. And we're quick to give you all the glory. We don't waste time giving you all the glory. We don't hesitate giving you all the glory. But Father, our fingers are pointed towards you right now saying, Lord, receive your glory. Lord, receive the healing that you died for tonight. Lord, receive the deliverance that you died for to send us. Lord, receive the miracles that you sent by the Holy Spirit and we thank you and we praise you and we honor you and we exalt you and we magnify you for you're the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, Jehovah Rapha. Oh, Jehovah Rapha. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord that provides, Lord Jesus, we thank you for providing everything that needs provided for right now. You're the Lord, our shepherd. You're providing everything that needs to be provided. You're watching over the flock. You're taking care of the flock, and we thank you. Wow, we can't thank you enough. We cannot thank you enough. We cannot praise you enough. We cannot exalt you enough. We cannot magnify you enough, but Lord, we give it our best shot, and we thank you. Wow. Praise God. Come on, praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We give you the highest praise. 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 I just have one, I have one phrase. As we close pre-service prayer, thank you for coming. And this main service starts at 7, but I'm reminded of something that Brother Roberts used to say, Brother Oral Roberts, and that's this, expect a miracle. Are y'all guys expecting a miracle tonight? It's miracles on the mountain. We're expecting miracles. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Thank you, guys. Service starts at 7. We have a little bit of a break. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus.